so welcome to the another lecture where we are uh, going to study about the coating on cutting tools not only on cutting tools some other type so we can see like uh, some of the coatings you can do on work pieces also so for the some of the applications and all those things okay so in overview what we will see is that uh, on tools how the coating process will be done which type of coating will be done what is the function of x type of coatings and y type of coatings and all those things okay so we will see what we have done in the previous class we have done the surface roughness measurement uh, material removal rate machinability and all those things just a point which i missed out in the last class i want to say that surface roughness and surface morphology can be also measured using the atomic force microscopy okay so the atomic force microscopy which i have missed out in the last class when i was teaching with a scanning electron microscopy and uh, transmission electron microscopy this is the another way of the technique where uh, you can measure the surface morphology how the surface look like in a three dimensional and all those things okay you have a sample here so this is a sample and uh, there will be a afm sensor that is cantilever beam is there so if the surface roughness is like this so cantilever beam will be there and it will be move on so the laser light will fall on it and uh, photodiode will receiver will be there and will receive actually okay so based on this principle if there is a up down valley peak and all those things those can be measured in a three dimensional so it will be good quality picture normally in terms of 3d it will give okay so you can see this is how the output of uh, of afm atomic force microscopy will be okay this is a three dimensional where you will give the details about the surface morphology with the intricate details and all those things okay this is the another technique along with the what we have studied in the previous techniques so the other thing that uh, we have uh, seen in the last where we end yesterday was uh, laser assisted machining schematic diagram would have been a better option but uh, i have shown you some of the applications of uh, laser assisted machining so, so so to brush up you how the laser assisted machining will be there so this will be a laser source which imparts a laser beam on this one and uh, you can heat it so that the brittle material converts into ductile material and then you machine okay so just i want to show you the how that single point cutting tool involve in the ductile rigid machining of brittle materials okay that's what i want to show you so the schematic will explain you in a big way and this is the original image so and it not only the machining operation it will do many many operations on the brittle materials okay this is about the previous class which are missed out and uh, which are to be conveyed in the form of schematics for the explanation in a better way okay so now moving to the cutting tools coatings so there are overview what i am going to talk is introduction to cutting tool coatings what and type of cutting tool coatings are required why the cutting tool coatings are required and the coating tool materials what are the materials that i you you are going to see and types of cutting tool coatings like there are many various techniques like cvd that is chemical vapor deposition physical vapor deposition under the physical vapor deposition you have thermal spraying plasma spraying and electrical discharge coating the electrical discharge coating won't come under thermal spraying but it is a thermal assisted coating sir laser coating or laser cladding so the burnishing is also one of the coating techniques this is a economic one basically coating technique if anybody want to work on the coatings using burnishing tools it is very simple i will show you so you can take up uh, as your uh, uh, some of the projects like btp or mtp and you can carry out this with coating and without coating of uh, the machining performance of particular tools okay so you can do the some texturing on the tool then you burnish that will be better 
okay this is uh, from the research point of view okay so now we move to the basic need of coating okay what is the need of coating if you see some of the tools are there here these are all uncoated some of the slides which i have talked in previous also so they are gray type of thing and golden type of thing are there so the gray ones are uncoated basically okay these are coated tools this is well okay so to enhance the tool life normally this is the first and primary requirement for us is to utilize the same tool for long time that will be the major motto so that means i want to enhance the life so how to enhance you have to increase the hardness or you have to impart some special properties that what will happen your base material normally for example tungsten carbide base material base tool will be there on top of it you will add a multi layers of very high hardness tool material coatings so that it can enhance that is one like the example i am telling about that is the one way the second thing is to performance of machining so the performance means i have to cut more and more material at the same time without any failure so to reduce the requirements of cooling okay we will see what are the cooling problems cooling and uh, providing the lubrication we have just seen the glimpse how it will affect the humans and all those things so always the researchers try towards minimizing the cutting fluid are eliminating the cutting fluid if you can go for the better better tools or the best tools you can avoid the coolant normally coolant why you will use you will use because you want to take out the or extract the heat that is generated in the machining region and to lubricate the frictional area in the machining zone if tool can take over all these things there is no need of cutting fluid so that's why normally the technology of cutting tools and tool coatings is continuously growing in the market for betterment of the machining ability okay so these are the cutting tool inserts where the you can see the coated and coated normally diamond damage tools okay you can see the damage tools how the damage is taken okay so in order to minimize this damage one will go for the tool coatings this is the one of the option i am i am saying so there are varieties of tool coatings the first one is soft and hard coatings depend on your application normally most of the coatings that people will do is hard coatings normally these are the hard coatings they will do because to increase the hardness penetration resistance to penetration is what you require for that purpose you will always use hard coatings so some of the people also use the soft coating soft coatings are the another coatings why soft coatings are used for example i want to coat mos2 molybdenum disulfide molybdenum disulfide which you have seen as a solid lubricant it will have low shear strength graphite if i want what will happen it will have a hexagon where uh, at the same time you will have a van der waal uh, bonding where this is very easy to broke so it will shear off if uh, it comes in between the chip and tool interface what will happen this bond will break and this goes off that means it will stay okay so what i mean to say is that these are the low shear strength materials and this shears off so that it will act as a proper lubricant in the machining region but you can do this soft coatings by burnishing technique okay so when i some of the people do this on the tool textures anyhow i will talk about uh, some of the burnishing techniques and all those things 
in later whenever i am talking about the sustainable machining and all those things there are some other topics like hydrophobic and hydrophilic coatings normally hydrophobic phobia means many people will have phobia like uh, if somebody want to undergo ct scan diagnosis you will have uh, some phobia okay so that means that you are fearing to it okay so like that if phobia means normally if you have the surface it won't stick to the surface it has phobia just i am telling you the analogy it will have a certain contact is not proper in a hydrophilic surface you will have a proper filling will be there okay so some of the coatings will be like hydrophobic so that the sticking of chip won't takes place and sometimes you need hydrophilic from the perspective of cutting fluid let me explain from the perspective of chip you always required hydrophobic so that chip should not stick to the surface it should fear and goes out it has to go up so in from the point of cutting to cutting fluid what you need is you need a hydrophilic coating sand tool so that what will happen it will form a thin layer and try to cool the maximum surface as well as it will also lubricate so that is a beauty about the hydrophilic coatings and hydrophobic coatings on the cutting tool okay so technology is so developed that nowadays customized tools are coming up if you ask the such companies they will give you a better better tools with the better coatings also but normally if you see you may not get uh, this customized in the market if you go and get this will be common type of tools where the hard coatings are there okay so the commonly available what i mean to say is hard coating you will see in the market hard coating tools on a tungsten carbide basically so the coating what its functions are it enhances the wear resistance it enhances the oxid oxidation resistance so the wear resistance means it the wear and tear will be minimum okay so you can see the nose wear here in this picture so i want the less nose wear for that i need to go for certain coatings where the wear resistance is more so that i can increase or enhance the tool life that is called the wear resistant coatings so the oxidation resistant it should not form the oxidation normally if you see a mild steel plate if you put in the atmospheric conditions assume that the rain comes and uh, the atmosphere reactions will takes place the rust will form on it okay so whenever rust form you just uh, scratch with nail you can you can remove it because whenever there is a pure mild steel is there you cannot scratch it okay so when the oxidation forms the rust forms is nothing but the oxidation or oxide film you can easily scratch it that means that the strength will go down so what i want is i want less scratching for that oxidation resistance resistance to metal fatigue you required okay it should not uh, go in very few number of cycles and resistant to thermal shock normally in intermittent cutting and all those things what is the basic problem is the shock okay so like a milling cutters and all those things or whenever i am cutting a square type of rod in a lathe just i hold it a square type of rod and if you do it what will happen it is a intermittent cutting one edge will come another edge will come and hit on the tool so there shock will be there and thermal shocks also because at the high temperatures thermal shocks will be also coming in the picture okay so the crater wear flank wear this is the nose wear you are seeing and if you see on the isometric view one is the flank wear another one is a crater wear and the notch wear everywhere are there so coatings tries to reduce these wears
sphere types okay that is our primary motto so the coating material should have the following characteristics what are the characteristics that i want whenever i am coating for particular machining application high hardness i said no very resistance hardness hardness is nothing but resistance to penetration so resistance to penetration this is should be there and the chemical stability and inertness it should not chemically react with the work piece at the same time it should not chemically react with the cutting fluid that is falling on the machining zone in that circumstances you will get a good output from the product side that should be there low thermal conductivity if it is low thermal conductivity what will happen it won't conduct inside the tool where the bare material of the cutting tool material is there yeah, so that it will prevent the rise of temperature of the tool if the chip is moving on top of it and my tool this is my tool and this is chip if it is moving on top of it this particular surface is uh, low thermal conductivity material what will happen it cannot conduct into the my tool for that purpose it should be always low thermal conductivity okay so that the chip with that carries 80 to 85 percent temperature or heat that is generated in the machining region will goes off with low thermal conductivity to the tool compatibility and good bonding whenever you coat a particular material it should not delaminate as early as possible it should stay for long time that is nothing but it should have a good compatibility chemically and physically and it should have good bonding ability if it has a good bonding what will happen it will act as a any material okay single material if the bonding is proper that means that it is a very good material there is no delamination occurring in the cutting tool material during the machining operation okay little or no porosity okay no porosity is not possible in any type of processes but minimizing the porosity is only the possibilities so we have said that little porosity should be there or minimum porosity should be there if the porosity is there the strength of the coating goes off so you should be taking care of the strength and integrity of that particular coating so for that purpose porosity should be minimal so that the integrity among the coating with respect to the substrate will be always good okay this is the coating characteristics that i want so if a coating material if it has all these characteristics then that material is a good material to coat okay if you see the coating materials now we have seen the what are the characteristics that it should possess and now we are coming to the various types of things just as i spoke to you that bare material normally will be a tungsten carbide okay this is a common material where the tools are used so on top of it you will coat a multi layers so the most commonly used coating materials are like titanium carbide is the one material titanium carbonitride zirconium nitride okay so titanium nitride is another material aluminum oxide it is a ceramic material titanium aluminum nitride is another material okay so these are the materials that uh, one can use as a coating material okay if you can see a plain tungsten carbide uh, tool this will be a plain this is uncoated so the students from btech should understand what is coating and uncoating if you have not uh, there in the previous classes okay you should be able to understand this is a plain uh, tungsten carbide that means there is no coating whenever you do the coating it normally color changes but similar materials also available okay titanium aluminum nitride which is a, this is the coating is done on this one so aluminum titanium nitride black type of coating is also done titanium uh, carbonitride is done which is a blue gray color coating is done and titanium nitride okay so 
for a general explanation if you just compare these two tools okay okay this is uncoated tool and this is coated tool okay this is the only difference that uh, you should note okay so the titanium oxycarb carbonitrate this is uh, another bronze color type of coating is done and aluminum oxide e is a ceramic what normally what i say is the ceramic coating ceramic coating is done okay so to enhance the better life normally ceramic coatings ceramics are low thermal conductivity material so just now i was speaking it should have low thermal conductivity so that the chip that is carrying the high temperature should not pass on this temperature to the substrate that is the substrate is nothing but uncoated material this one this is the substrate on which i am coating many layers of hard tools okay this is about the coating materials methods of coating the cutting tool the basically there are two types of methods common methods i mean to say but there are many many types of methods are there but uh, we discuss some of the techniques apart from cvd and pvd also so the commonly used material tool coating techniques are chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition techniques the advanced techniques to cvd and pvd also will be there that is called plasma assisted cvd will be there and uh, moderate temperature cvd also is there these are the another uh, two variants of uh, cvd okay so let me uh, talk about uh, why the requirement of this uh, pa cvd and mt cvd came into picture okay. if you see the physical vapor deposition normally will be in this range okay if you see the cvd that is chemical vapor deposition it will be in the range of 1000 degrees temperature whenever you want to do the chemical vapor deposition so the normally the temperature range will be in this range okay so if you see the physical vapor deposition it will be in this range okay so that means chemical vapor deposition require higher temperatures but the basic problem is whenever you go for higher and higher temperatures the basic problem comes is if at all my composition have many elements in it some of the elements may goes off sublimate then the problem comes is the composition that i am coating on that particular material may not be good that for that per particular purpose what the people tries to do is they want to bring down the temperature of the coating okay the coating done at certain temperature be if you can bring down that temperature that will be best so that elements don't goes off from the composition that you are coating that's why plasma assisted chemical vapor deposition is came into existence whose temperature lies much below than the cvd okay this is the at the same time pvd and cvd if you see here there is a color change for the similar materials and all those thing okay so different temperatures for processing of different compositions will takes place okay so now we will move on to the chemical vapor deposition technique so how the chemical vapor deposition will technique will takes place in a reactor substrate heated up and exposed to the gas of the steam okay it is heated up the substrate and it is exposed to the gas steam the gas breaks down to the hard substrate surface where they form a layer in general normally as i said it will have the temperature at 1000 degrees okay the principle that we will see in the next slide this is a schematic diagram where uh, you can see all the things zones and how the vacuum for the better up understanding i will show you in the next slide this is just a overview how the cvd will takes place if you see this picture the mechanism 
how the chemical vapor deposition takes place. The first one is diffusion of precursors will takes place. Anyhow, you can see the one corresponding to the diffusion of precursors. Okay, the substrate heats, then it will uh, the gas will takes out. Then the second goes adsorption of the substrate surface. This precursors will go and adsorb on the surface. It is surface. Then there is a chemical reaction between these two materials, the substrate material and whether the target material. So the precursor which is coming from the substrate will sit on the target material that and there will be a chemical interaction. Reaction takes place for proper bonding. Then comes desorption or absorbed material. Okay, it goes and diffusion of the byproducts will takes place. Okay, if there is any byproducts that is forming, it will goes as the fumes or as a gas or something. Okay, these are the standard steps for the chemical vapor deposition technique. So the advantages, if you see the optimum layer adhesion will takes place and consistent layer distribution will takes place. That means that uniform layer will takes place on a substrate. If I have a substrate, uniform layer will takes place on this one without any disturbance. Okay. So, this is a okay. so, that is about the CVD advantages. So, every process will have its own disadvantages. The disadvantages is the normally the temperature goes high that is 1000 degrees or plus or minus some degrees it will go. So, some of the elements will goes off in the composition. At the same time it is suitable for few materials only if there is a melting point of that material is much below than uh, the 1000 degrees what will happen? It is not suitable for long cycle times it will take the long time to do the coating operation. Okay. Now, we are coming to the physical vapor deposition. Okay. Physical vapor deposition done normally in the vacuum. Okay. It is done in the vacuum method which was used to produce the thin films or the coatings on the substrate material. Okay. So, anyhow schematic is here. The, in the PVD process the material goes from condensed phase to the vapor phase again come back to the condensed phase in the form of thin material. Okay. So, what I mean to say is that you have a solid material substrate target will be there. You just heat it up then this will go into the vapor phase solid is there it will go into the vapor phase it will occupy the target wherever it has to coat then it will condense there okay, and form a thin coating that is called vapor, vapor deposition physically it is occurring there is no chemical reactions. In the previous case there is a third point that is called the chemical reaction takes place on the substrate material with the target material. Here there is no chemical reaction that is why this is called physical vapor deposition technique. Okay. If you see the substrate is there external energy what is we are going to supply is the external energy to heat the substrate you will do then the thin film deposition will takes place and the solid target material is there just you target on it. Okay. Anyhow we will see the mechanism in the next slide anyhow, but however we just see the applications of this one. It will apply mostly on the solar panels, food packing and cutting tools which we are talking about is mostly the cutting tool applications is one of the biggest applications in physical vapor deposition. If you see in elaborative mechanism, high temperature vacuum evaporation will takes place, transportation of evaporated atoms and condense and deposition will takes place. If you see there is a source, from the source evaporation takes place, gas phase it will form. Okay. So, from the gas pose phase it will form on the target and the target it will solidify by a condensation process okay, or the deposition process. That is what is the mechanism. Okay. If you, so, PVD carried out at high temperature and vacuum not like CVD. 
in this pvd also the temperature ranges vary from for material to material okay high temperature melting point low vapor pressure materials normally used and usually there is no chemical reaction takes place between the the material that is depositing on the work piece that means that substrate and the material that is depositing as well as the substrate there is no chemical reaction that is what is emphasized here formation of thin and uniform coating on the film will take place here also you will get the uniform okay. but if you see the classification of the physical vapor deposition there are many many techniques are there like sputtering and evaporation so in the sputtering normally rf sputtering will be there and dc magneton sputtering will be there in the evaporation techniques thermal sputtering uh, thermal evaporation technique arc e beam some of the techniques are there laser and all those things are there okay it may not i am may, i am not going to talk about exactly the classification since uh, it is not the core area of our uh, manufacturing units who works on the metal cutting operations it is a separate subject in the material science where the coatings technologies are a very very big technologies so i just talk about briefly some of the techniques how these perform in the coating operations okay so the pvd the first one will be the sputtering techniques so some of the works which also we also do using uh, rf sputtering radio frequency sputtering so the most commonly used uh, pvd process is a sputtering process uh, which works on the sputtering and evaporation techniques okay if you see here the target is a cathode and the substrate is an anode basically whenever you give the some charge negative terminal to the this one negative terminal and here the positive terminal what will happen there will be a charge deposition material is removed from the target by the momentum of transfer by the collision of atoms and molecules okay the material is removed from the target basically okay so we will have the target and we will have the substrate material the target is one uh, the gas molecules are ionized in a glow charge that is called plasma ions will strike the target and remove mainly neutral atoms the sputtering atoms condense and uh, uh, it will form on the work uh, the material where on which you have to deposit okay so basically the argon gas is used as a inert atmosphere i said you know in the physical vapor deposition normally vacuum will be created so at the same time you can also use the argon as a uh, one of the gassing agent okay so if you see the schematic which we have already seen the negative terminal and positive terminal once uh, if you give the charge what will happen there will be a deposition takes place on the material that i want this is about the sputtering okay if you see thermal spraying is one of the most uh, thick coatings if at all you want thermal spraying is one of the techniques okay thermal spraying categorized as one of the combination material heat force in order to coat okay where you also use the heat to melt the substrate material and to go on the target at the same time you send with high force so that means i am in some of the techniques you just use only thermal in some of the techniques you will use thermal plus force okay so we will see both of the things so often we used as uh, the high velocity oxy fuel techniques is one of the things flame spray technique plasma spray technique wire arc technique many other techniques are there will one by one we will go through so what is the thermal spray coating okay so the thermal spray coating thermal spray coatings are mold melted soft and ceramic or metallic polymer materials are transported by gas stream and the proper spray. that's what i was telling you have a feed stock where you will have a assume that you have a powder which is a feed stock just you will do the melting it will convert into the liquid form then this molten particles are accelerated with high pressure gas 
and it will deposit on the substrate with that impact then you cool it. So, you will get the coating. Okay. So, this is about the how we will do the thermal spray techniques. So, what I want to say here is here we have used only the powder one. Apart from powder we can also use rod and wire also as a precursors. So, so that you can coat on uh, sub uh, on the target. If you see the wire feed previously we have seen the powder now we are seeing the uh, wire feed stock. If you are uh, using the rollers drive rollers and just you feed it now the fuel is in and it, it is melting then you are sending with high pressure. So, you will get a coat on the target material. This is the my target where this molten material is going and adhering to the surface. Okay. So, this is how the coating takes place in the thermal spraying technique. So, for example, if you see it is not only used for cutting tools, you can use for any other applications also like uh, uh, wherever the thermal barrier coatings are required and all those things. Okay. This is about the thermal spray. If you see from the coating application towards the cutting tool, okay. since thermal spraying may be a multiple applications will be there. However, we want to see for our application like cutting tool application. One of the application that I have taken from the research papers is yttrium stabilized zirconia coating is done on the tool steel. Okay. This is a substrate material where uh, this is the base material. On the base material the coating is done using the yttria stabilized zirconia which is a ceramic. If you see the intermediate layer, if you see the substrate this is a substrate and uh, this is the coating okay the top one is a coating and this bottom one is a substrate and in between you can see how the adhesion taking place in this middle one okay so the basic problem that you can observe from this scanning electron microscopies are voids are there see many voids and there is a phase changes are there and all those things that is a basic problem of thermal spraying technique and there is a possibility of oxide inclusion because if you see in if you would have clearly observed in the previous slide the oxygen intake also is there. So, whenever the molten substrate is there assume that I am sending a precursor through wire which is molten then you are passing through oxygen also it will have a oxide inclusions in it. Okay. At the same time because of the pressure and all those things variations and all those things whites also will form on this one. These are the some of the drawbacks of uh, thermal spray techniques. Okay. We will to how to overcome this one. So, overcome of this one will be like uh, moving on to the plasma coatings. Okay. In the difference between thermal spraying and plasma is plasma as you know it is a fourth state of uh, matter where this also will look like a gas, but the thing is that it will be a charged glass. So, there are charges will be there and this charges plasma jet will go and impinge on my target which is uh, material on which I need a coating. So, you can do the coating this is as simple as that one. Note that in the previous case the molten jet is going which is may be because whenever the gas is involved it may be atomized gas. Here it is also a atomized gas, but the thing what you have to observe is this atomized gas have charges that is positive and negative charges will be there for this charge that is why it is called as a plasma. Okay. Some of the applications if you see if na normally many applications are there hard working dye is there chemical industries are there 3D printing also you can do using this techniques textiles 
and CNC cutting tools. I was just I was mostly concentrating about these things because we bother about uh, two things that is uh, cutting tools, cemented carbide tools normally we will do at the same time tool coatings like a drilling coating, milling cutters and all these coatings are done using this plasma coating process. This is a one of the good example where you were porosity will decrease compared to thermal spray and the oxidation also you can reduce that is the beauty about the plasma that is why thermal spraying compared to thermal spraying people prefer plasma spray, but it has its own disadvantage like cost may goes up. So, the cost of the initial equipment may be slightly higher than this one. So, the every process has its pros and cons. Okay? Then comes another thermal spraying techniques that is called uh, HVOF coating that is called uh, high velocity oxy fuel coating. Okay? Where here you will use the heat and pressure to coat. Okay? So, you will also use the heat that to melt the material that you have to coat on top of it and uses the pressure to coat on it. Oxygen is mixed with either a liquid or a gas and combustion chamber where it heats until the forced at the supersonic speeds okay? like uh, Mach 3. Okay? So, gas is mixed with this one and ejected with very high velocities at the supersonic speeds is designed like a jet engine technology can produce the velocities like Mach 3. Okay? So, it will impinge with high velocity on the substrate on which it has to coat. The coating is ground onto the powder shot and which is binds to the metal forming a coat. Okay? It is incredibly strong bonding will take place. That means, whenever it is impinging with very high velocity on the substrate material it will have a proper bonding compared to our conventional thermal spraying techniques. Okay. The advantage of this one is it produces the very high hardness coating with low porosity and excellent bonding strength. It will have a proper bonding will be there, porosity will be minimized and which have a high hardness because you are sending with high velocity. So, it will have a very good density. So, hardness will be obviously good. Okay. The cons will be it will be specialized staff is required because uh, normal operator a unknown operator may not be sufficient to operate this one or uh, these facilities. Okay. It is having a complex microstructures equipment. So, specialized people should only operate these materials. This is about if you see the substrate where SIC, SIC and CMC is there. So, ceramic metal composite will be there. So, where SI silicon bond coating will be done then you will have another coating on top of it. Okay. This is how the coating will be done using uh, high velocity oxy fuel coatings. Okay. This is only thing that you have to observe here is it sends at very high velocity about Mach 3 and uh, coating will be done. If you see the kinetic energy versus uh, uh, thermal energy, normally the thermal energy requirements are very high for arc spray followed by the plasma spray, flame spray and high velocity oxy fuel and all those things. Okay. So, high velocity access PL cold spray this require more kinetic energy, but thermal energy required for wire spray because wire has to melt. So, for that purpose you need to give more thermal energy. Okay. Plasma you need to give more thermal energy, but plasma can go easily with less kinetic energy also. But whenever you want to send the cold spray on top of a substrate to on which you have to coat it cannot go. So, you need high kinetic energy for cold spray and anyhow you have seen 
high velocity oxy fuel coating you also send with a mac 3 okay this about the kinetic energy versus thermal energy how do you manage so that what is your requirement if i have a thermal source very good thermal source and minimal cutting energy uh, kinetic energy source what will happen you just go for these type of things so if i have a good thermal plus kinetic energy source i can go for this and if i have low thermal and high kinetic normally you can go for the cold spray technique okay that's how you will choose your options whenever you want to do the coating operation okay so electric discharge coating this is another one coating where thermal energy used so normally electric discharge machining many of uh, you may know from the point of uh, electric discharge uh, machining okay when the electric discharge machining will takes place electric discharge machining normally you will connect the negative terminal to the tool and positive terminal to the workpiece okay so the electrons start uh, flowing from assume that i have a uh, the same schematic let me draw here if this is the just a schematic where my tool is there okay so negative terminal is given here positive terminal is here what will happen electro you will have a dielectric fluid here so whenever the electrons start moving from this whenever you give some charge to it what will happen the electrons start moving from negative terminal to positive terminal this electrons basically whatever the dielectric fluid will be deionized water consider it as a deionized water what do you mean by deionized water okay it will have the charges are taken out that what me i mean to say is uh, it will have uh, ions are taken out deionization that means that ions are less whenever the electrons are coming from my negative terminal so if i zoom this portion of uh, sparking i have this one negative terminal and positive terminal whenever there is a potential difference between these two i have a deionized water the electrons release from this one and touches one dielectric molecule dielectric is deionized water that means that it has less ions plus uh, with more electrons so it will dissipate lot of electrons and these electrons will go and they hit again a dielectric molecule of the next layer it will give this many 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 electrons but few ions in that way the electrons millions of millions of electrons will come and touch the my positive terminal the kinetic energy of my electrons will convert into thermal energy and melting and evaporation takes place but if you see on the other side what will happen the ions are very less so this may not go and hit the uh, my negative terminal so there is a possibility of deposition of the material will takes place so if i do the reverse polarity what will happen if my workpiece is made negative and positive terminal to the tool what will happen it will start depositing on top of it there is a less chance for deposition some of the research papers shows the deposition is there but in practical the deposition may takes place because there is no uh, sufficient amount of ions since the ions are also in a big size against the gravity it has to travel and heating may not that much proper where the thermal energy can generate because of the kinetic energy of these ions so there is a possibility of uh, coating okay so if you mix along with that one the powder mix that's what i was telling if you do the powder mixing is done whatever the material that i want to coat in the dielectric fluid plus if i do the reverse polarity where ions and electrons interact change between workpiece and tool 
what will happen there is a deposition takes place in the deposition these particles also play a major role so that the deposition may be better and better okay this is one of the hypothesis some of the people are proposing in the last 10 years of research okay so you people if somebody want to take up as a master's thesis or a BTEC thesis or uh, if you have a normally EDM processes are normally available in the small small universities also it is not a very big costly equipment so you can take up and you can mix very hard materials as your uh, uh, coating materials and do the reverse polarity and you try to get some coating and you can test on the machine okay the recast layer will form here recast layer will form heat affected zone will form and conversion layer and all those layers will form so the recast layer may be the composition of your particles if the particles are very hard then the your recast layer that is recast layer means what do you mean the casting the casting is nothing but molten metal you are for you are making into a certain shape so here what will happen molten metal is there it is resolidifying there that means that casting is taking place okay in between if your particles goes and stick to that one it it is good since your particles are harder so it may have proper bonding and all those things very very better chances are there okay i am not saying that exactly so these are the some of the reports uh, given by the, some of the researchers in the newly in the research area in the electric discharge coating techniques okay so only uh, thing that you have to always take care is whenever your colleagues also work in the similar areas or edm they are working on electro discharge machining and you are working on electro dis discharge coating so you should have a separate uh, container where uh, you will uh, have your own fluid so that it won't contaminate the your colleagues cutting uh, dielectric fluid okay so please take care about these things and uh, this can be a good work if you rightly choose your particles and uh, rightly play with your input parameters like duty cycle and all other things okay so laser coatings nowadays many people are working some people they call it as a laser cladding some people they call it as a laser coating okay so there are uh, some of the techniques that will be used by things like coaxial technique pre-placement technique and all those things anyhow if you see my substrate is there the specimen is there and i am putting my powder from the powder nozzle and powder nozzle and i am going to put a laser source on top of it so that uh, melting takes place at this and it's alloying in this region alloying is done and then cladding will be done okay so you can see the alloying zone the green portion in this picture green portion is nothing but the alloying zone and this is a clad zone that means that coating is done so what you are going to get is you are alloying will help you in great bonding okay that is what we want okay when the bonding is proper then on top of it your coating is there it is excellent for you okay so that is one of the beauty and you can see this is the cladding direction or what are the other things like a laser beam is there powder jet is there this is a coaxial powder system is there and the melt pool is taking place and the workpiece okay so the melt pool takes place the molten metal will form two layers one is the alloying layer whichever reacts elementally reacts with his own elements with the substrate elements okay so now you can get it the good layer of alloying plus cladding so the you can see the coaxial normally coaxial means in the same nozzle if you are getting your powder particles plus laser that is nothing but coaxial beam is there okay so powder cladding will be done so if you see the line beam the pre-placed powder will be there on one side and if you want coaxially it will you will also get this coaxial powder will be there and then uh, it will be done with a line beam so the cladding will be done on the surface okay this is about the coaxial there are other varieties 
powder jet will be supplied from sideways and laser beam will be done is projected from one direction so that you can have a clad plus alloy alloying region will be there and the cladding will be then so coaxially you have seen already this is a coaxial where uh, nozzle and the um, beam powder both will come in the same nozzle another one some of the gas assisted powder will fall from sideways and the beam will come here so that this powder before it reaching to this area a preheating will takes place in the laser beam and it will clad on the surface so these are the three varieties are three types of laser coatings are there not only on tools you can also do on various various materials because uh, nowadays it is becoming one of the important process because laser has very flexibility the huge flexibility of the laser will help uh, in proper coating and proper bonding in the material okay so this is another way of the coating you can see the laser coating area so the base material is there if you do the cross sectional study of this one the mixed zone is there heat affected zone is there and cladding zone is there okay this is how you do the cladding and uh, overview of the surface you can see many of the people works uh, with the laser cladding in the biomedical applications okay other pvds are pulse laser deposition where uh, high power laser beam ablates the material from the target whenever the you just uh, send the high laser power beam on the target what will happen it will uh, ablate the material that means that it will become the vapors argon ion gas is used as a inert atmosphere and high vacuum is formed and laser focused on the lens and decide the position okay now it will decide the position and it will deposit on top of it so that it will deposit on the workpiece this is called pulse laser deposition this deposition is uh, one of the advanced techniques and even some of the people that iit gohati are also working so if you have the facility it is a very good technique you can use this technique and you can coat it okay so classification this is the evaporation techniques where the source material is heated to the sublimation temperature then the thermal by the eb method and then you can coat on the substrate material where you want to coat okay so the material vapor transported to the target in the vacuum and you can easily coat on the workpiece material wherever you want to okay so the only thing you are required is as i said in the pv uh, pvd coating vacuum is required okay so other pvd techniques is arc deposition technique in the high electric arc it discharge at the target from the highly ionized vapor will come and deposit on the material okay so these are all physically what is is required is you need a temperature where the you will have a precursor which is a material where you just evaporate and it goes on the target and it deposit on the target okay this is how you will deposit on the the material so that you will get the good bonding and good coating okay the electron beam coating see nowadays many people are publishing in this area but uh, this process is slightly costlier process because electron beam guns are very costly so here normally if you see there is a wire feeder is there if you see there is a wire feeder and uh, resolidified alloying uh, zone is there and uh, once you have a substrate material on top of it the wire feeder gives the powder where sorry it will give a wire continuously wire so electron beam will fall on it and it will melt and it will form a layer or a coat on top of it so this will be a more sophisticated technique where you can go for nanometers to micrometers thickness layer okay so electron beam deposition also you can take the material deposited is heated to a high vapor pressure by electron bombardment and in the vacuum the electron beam generated by the tungsten filament normally tungsten filament is used to bombard and uh, then the deposition is carried out in a vacuum and the beauty about this is the uniform coating will takes place okay 
so only thing is that here you have to make your system vacuum in the laser you may not require vacuum but uh, electron beam deposition and all those techniques you require the good vacuum conditions okay so that uh, you can form a uniform layer but only i said no the drawback of this process is uh, it is slightly costlier so advantages and disadvantages of uh, physical vapor deposition it is environmental friendly than paint and electro plating so more than one pvd technique can be used for the coating so one coating is done by one thermal spraying techniques you can do the another coating by electron beam coating and all those things so you can use multiple because there is no chemical effect and all those things usually top coats are not required so you you don't require any layer to protect or something good strength and durability will be there the strength will be high at the same time durability will be very long that's what I mean. pvd coatings has no interaction with the surface so there is no interaction with chemical interaction with the surface the large range of materials can be coated relative to low operating temperature that is around 450 degrees as you have seen chemical vapor deposition done normally at 1000 degrees here this normally will be done at 450 400 500 in this range so that the if at all you want to get the cutting edges sharp you you may get it because whenever you want to coat with high temperature what will happen there is a grain structure will change it will enlarge and all those things so you may not get sufficient sharp enough so if you are doing at low temperature what will happen there is a very less chance of grain size enlargement so you will get good sharp cutting edges and all those things that's about the advantages of the pvd so disadvantages as i said every process will have its own pros and cons so cooling systems are required okay mostly high temperature vacuum controls is required so you need a vacuum control in the pvd most of the pvds so coating internal surface is difficult so if at all i want to coat some internal surfaces so it is may not be possible okay so these are the difficulties or the drawbacks of this process okay so if you see the difference between pvd and cvd till now we have seen many pvd varieties only we have seen the cvd only one so pvd uses physical source while cvd primarily uses a chemical process so that is a different it is a physically completely it is a chemically reaction will takes place for alloying surface area the pvd typically pure source material but cvd uses mixed source material okay what is what i want to say is that uh, there the alloying is physically taking place here the chemical reaction taking place because of this you will have the mixed source that's what uh, is a difference between physical vapor deposition and chemical vapor deposition so characterization of coatings is another big area which we have already seen so x x ray fluorescent radio stylus profilometer can be normally used at the same time you can use 3d profilometers also to measure the thickness of the coat and all those things so indentations normally if i want to check the indentations and all those things i can do go for wicker hardness test rockwell hardness test to measure the hardness of this one and the coating compositions as i said in the previously in the characterization surface characterization where i was talking about the scanning electron microscopy so slightly advanced version because these coatings are nano size coatings you have to go for uh, field enhanced scanning electron microscopy and edax analysis i said no edax analysis will tell you the elemental compositions in the material okay so you can characterize elementally plus morphologically and metallurgically you can do all these things if at all i want to know the grain boundaries and grain sizes then you have to go for tem transmission electron microscopy and all those things okay so the mechanically we have seen all the thermally now the only many processes are there but the easiest i was telling you the economical is coating by burnishing process okay so you will have a rolling ball and if you see rolling ball is there and uh, just you put certain pressure on top of it and you roll on top of it so that if you have any surface roughness that roughness will deform plastically that is severe plastic deformation will takes place 
and it will give the good surface finish ok. So, if you can add some of the particles that you want to coat in a molten state or in a powder form in a nano powder form you just place these powders in the these rough surfaces then you do the burnishing. Then this deformation taking place will help those material to coat on the top of the surface and you will get a very good fine surface plus alloy surface coated surface you will get a partially alloying partially coated surface also you will get. So, you can see it will be normally used for a finishing application it is also can be used for the alloying and cladding applications by putting the powders in the rough surfaces then you roll appropriate loading conditions then you will get a good burnishing surface ok. So, how do you test normally you have done the coatings using thermal spraying technique electron beam coating laser beam coating CVD PVD and all those things. But how to check what is the strength of the coating how the hardness of the coating varying whether the uniform structure is there or not and all those things the first and foremost is you have to check the strength of that one. The strength of that one as I said one of the tribological technique is wear and tear the science of wear and tear is nothing but the tribology. So, the wear scratch test is normally used to scratch off the tool coating ok. You just use the tool on which coating is there just you apply the load some load and you give some scanning speed. So, that it will scratch if the delamination is taking place that means that that is not good ok. If the delamination is not in cake taking place that is good. So, how do you cross check once you do the scratch testing then you have to take this sample to your scanning electron microscopy there you just check face analysis as I said the back scattered at the same time you can also check the EDAX analysis where the elemental diagnosis if you are getting the elemental of the base material in the scanning EDAX analysis that means that the coating is completely gone if you are getting still the coating material that is coated using any type of these things which we have discussed that means that is good ok. So, the scratch test is one of the base test to test the adherence of my coating strength of my coating with respect to some load and speed of the scratch ok. You can do the ramp of the load you can ramp the speed also you can ramp. So, that at what load it is going and going off or delaminating takes place at what speed delamination is taking place and all those things you can check ok. These are the references. So, let me brief you today we have seen the coatings one is uh, CVD coating we have started with the CVD coating then followed by the PVD coating we have seen different types of PVD coating thermal spray, electron beam, laser, electric discharge these are the some of the techniques where some of the techniques follow vacuum some of the techniques do not require the vacuum and all those things. We have seen the mechanically one is the burnishing where the surface roughness uh, is finished if you can use the nano powders in the surface roughnesses then you do the burning operation you may get alloying plus coating. At the same time one, once you coating is done how do you cross check whether the coating is good or not that also we have done which is a basic study that is called uh, the scratch test ok. So, these are all the from the coating materials what are the requirements of the coating on a cutting tool to coatings then followed by different different techniques of the coatings and principles of that one then testing of the coating strength and all those things we have studied ok. So, this completes our class thank you.